Okay. Okay. So, um, I wasn't going to do a video today or a live stream today. I was going to sort of pin it on, uh, you know, from yesterday and, uh, cause I've got plenty of work to get on with, but, um, somebody dropped a new, uh, model on a new embedding of stable diffusion where they trained it specifically for robots. And of course that's a, a really good follow on from our, our sort of lab yesterday. So I, I kind of just wanted to pick up from yesterday and show you the, how to install this new version of stable diffusion or this, um, this offshoot of stable diffusion, this checkpoint of stable diffusion into automatic 111 so that you can do the same thing and so you can sort of see the results. Now, all of the stuff that I'm talking about, uh, most of it I've got from the AI, 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 AI entrepreneur, I think is, I don't know how to pronounce his, um, his YouTube channel name, but um, he does great tutorials. He's the one who dropped the, the, this, uh, this, like news about the robot diffusion and I, I follow him. I follow nerdy robot, uh, sorry, nerdy rodent as well. Who's another great AI enthusiast who um, does great tutorials. If you go check out nerdy Ro robot, I believe that's uh nerdy rodent, nerdy rodent. If you check out nerdy rodent, I believe he's the one who, who I followed in order to do the install for automatic one, 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 one. But I, Put the link for the for the GitHub for um, Automatic One 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 into the description of this video. So if you want to install the version of Stable Diffusion that I'm using that has the ability to merge checkpoints, that's the one to install. So follow those install instructions on that GitHub page. It's a little bit convoluted. If you get confused, maybe you can check out the Nerdy Rodent uh, tutorial on YouTube. And it's the same deals if. if you can't follow what I'm saying here with, or if you're running from a remote server or if you have a slow GPU, then go check out um, AI Entrepreneur and his YouTube channel and he will go through how to run it remotely. So I, I really want to run things locally and use you know my rather expensive GPU, which I'm going to upgrade in the next few months as well um, because it's just not cutting it. Because if you hadn't noticed in yesterday's tutorial, uh, yesterday's live stream when I push generate it just literally um, stops the live stream because there's just not enough uh, VRAM to, to handle throwing packets out to the internet with uh, live streaming video and generating uh, the stuff at the same time at least not on this machine so uh, let's just get straight into what I want to get into with uh, automatic 111 so the first thing you're going to need to do just before you even get started is you're going to Sorry, let's just bring this up. Let's make sure it's everything's up for you. Uh, what's going on here? It's um, not maximizing. Why is it doing this now? I was, I just, ah, uh, yeah, that's weird. Okay, just bear with me. I think I can see what's happening. It's just um, decided to drop off. There we go. Okay, so now we've got stable diffusion up and I can just show you quickly where you can find the repository for automatic 111. Um, maybe just to get started, I'll just go into my drive folder and bring up this document that I created, which has the link. So let's just get that link. So this is exactly what I've written in the description at the bottom of this video as well. So paste in the link, it'll take you directly to the automatic 111 Stable Diffusion Web UE installer and then scroll down depending on which operating system that you're working on to install installation and running and it has an automatic automatic installation on windows option so if you run through these instructions here then that will show you exactly how to set up stable diffusion automatic 1111 on your local machine to do what i'm doing then once you've installed that uh then you're going to have to go and grab the robo diffusion checkpoint uh, from GitHub as well. So I've I've given you the direct link to the page that has the download uh, link. So if you paste in that link to uh, Robo Diffusion, and then you'll see underneath uh, Nosar, I guess that's the user. Um, he's probably the person who created this checkpoint for us. Um, is a little download link. So you click that download link, and it will download the Robo checkpoint for you, um, which is literally called Robo Diffusion Version One Checkpoint. And then once you've 
downloaded that, then you need to put it into your models folder in Stable Diffusion. So, sorry if I'm going quickly, but I just really want to make this just a quick, a little quick lab before I have to get into my paid work. So I'm not paid to do this. My whole purpose for um, doing these live streams is to try and educate um, because I believe that in order to evolve as a um, society, as a as a entity, as a creature, as a species, then we we all have to learn at the same level. We can't have people that are very basic that just know, know just enough to get by. Um, that's the, that will devolve us as as a species, and and that will be our ultimate failing and falling of the human species. So in order for the human species to evolve, we all need to educate ourselves at the same level and keep on moving up, up, up rather than down. Otherwise, it'll end up like that movie, Idiocracy, where there's just a bunch of morons that are running everything, So, <laughs> which feels like it um, sometimes these days. So anyhow, um, just getting back into your local folder, I'm just going to go back into my Streamlabs and I'll bring up the folder that I've got. So the first thing you need to do is when you have downloaded the RoboDiffusion checkpoint, copy it from the downloads folder into the root folder for Stable Diffusion in the subfolder models and there should be in that models folder another subfolder called Stable Diffusion. So go into that and then you'll see uh, that's there'll be a little note in there anyhow that says this is where you paste your checkpoints. So that's where you want to paste your RoboDiffusion checkpoint. Once you have Stable Diffusion running, then you can see up here in these top tags, um, don't be worried if you don't have this text textual inversion option, I had to uh, install a checkpoint for that as well. So, um, which you can also think, I believe you can find that on the Nerdy Rodent uh, YouTube channel on how to install the textual inversion uh, like checkpoint, which is actually very useful if you want to train it for your own face or, for, you know, for a client's face in order to create custom characters that are, or, or comics that where you want the same thing, you can teach it the same style, the same subject, so you can repeat that which um, obviously with uh, a lot of these art, uh, AI art generators, you can't get the same results every time, but you can if you train it. So that's what this person has probably done with this, this robot checkpoint. He's probably loaded it with as much uh, robot imagery that he can and created a embedding for that and then packaged it together into a checkpoint merger. But anyhow, in the top, in the top tag under checkpoint merger, you can see your primary model names and your secondary model names. So this is how you merge your checkpoints. So you'll be starting probably with model checkpoint. And um, if you've put the uh, robot diffusion checkpoint in the right folder, it will appear in here as robot diffusion here. Okay. So I'm not going to run it again because I've already installed it here. But then you just type in your custom name. I typed in mega, I can't remember, mega model. I think, because it's like a combination of three different checkpoints. And then I just clicked run, and then you wait a little um, while for it to merge those two checkpoints together. Now, I thought that you just had to restart like um, automatic 111 once you've done this process, but I don't even know that you need to restart it. I think once you've created your new checkpoint, then you can go into settings. And then if you scroll down in your settings, um, you will see under Stable Diffusion, um, I've got Mega Model Checkpoint selected. So you can actually select the older model or you can stay on me Mega Model. And once you've done that and selected your new merge checkpoint, then scroll up, click Apply Settings, and then you can you should be up and running after that. So, all right. So that's how you get everything set up to get to this point. Now, the other thing that you need to know when you're using um, this to create like robots is that it's set up. So it uses Nossa, which is, I guess it's the username. So he's set it up with his name. Um, so in the prompt and text to prompt at the beginning, before you prompt any, anything else, ideally just type in Nossa robot because you need both of those. So this won't work unless you type in this prompt 
at the beginning of whatever that you're creating. So you type NOS R robot into your text to image, uh, text prompt, um, leave negative prompt. I'm going to leave everything else right now, but normally I'd play around with the, like the CFG scale. Maybe I'll just ride that up to 30. So this basically means that this image isn't going to be very creative. It's going to just really concentrate on producing this, you know, from the embedding. Um, so, so hopefully this isn't going to end my stream when I click generate, but this is a problem that I'm having. So I apologize if this cuts off the stream, um, but I've, I've got it set to very low setting, 512 by 512. So it's a nice small tile and uh, I shouldn't have any issues with running this and streaming at the same time. So let's click generate and see if that's, a, that's true. So we'll click generate now. I'll jump into, stay, uh, into my stream lab so I can see if it's going to freeze on me. And I'm waiting it out. Um, you again, uh, I've set this up this so you can see the command prompt for automatic one 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 there, and it's just starting to to draw now. So I know that it's not going to crash out. So that's good. Um, okay, so it's producing our robot now, and total progress hundred percent. I'll probably have to click back into. Yeah, here we go. So here's a little robot here. Um, it's a little hard to see it at the moment, but that could be because of the way in which I set these scales up um, or could be the seeds or anything like that. So, I mean, there's our first example of our robot, um, which I'm not particularly happy with. Um, so how would I change that? I could change the steps. So if we increase the steps, say, to 30, um, I'm going to reduce the CFG scale to something kind of like 13. So it's almost halfway. And we'll just try and generate again. All right. So that's that's giving us much better results. Okay. So there's our robot um, sort of forming here. And as you can see, it's pretty damn good. It's uh, creating some pretty cool, unique robot designs straight off the bat from using just that yeah, you know, you know, you know, you SR robot text prompt. And I guess I probably can say, you know, SR robot um, playing drums. I don't know. We'll see how it does with that and generate again. Let's see if it actually creates a robot playing the drums. Uh, by oh goodness me, it did. It did. It did exactly that. So. Um, perfect. It's working really well. It's created another unique robot. Um, it's very different from our initial seed though, but it's definitely, it's got a little symbol, uh, set there. So it's playing drums. There you go. You can see a bit better there. Okay. So again, we can try again. I've got this, I've got this set up so that it's trained to me. Um, I'm just wondering if I go Samuel which is my name, that's it, what I've embedded in, and then Cyborg. And we just leave it at that. And we'll just generate that and see if it tries to put me into the picture in some kind of way. Nah, it's not doing it. All right, no worries, no worries. That can be sometimes that the Samuel embedding sort of is throwing off the other part of the text prompt. So if I feel like that's the case, and what I like to do is to have a, a negative prompt in there as well. Let's see if this works. This, again, this is all experimental. This is experimental lab. Anything that I do here will be experimental. But when you're using negative prompts, if you want to weight those negative prompts, if I just put Samuel in there, it's just going to counter that Samuel embedding and it just won't won't include Samuel at all. But we want a little bit of Samuel in there. So I'm going to create a weight. So to create a weight, use those double dots. I'm not sure exactly what the the term is for them then i go 0 0.0003 or something like that so it's it's really it's a negative prompt but it's not it's really hardly taking any of samuel away so let's just see if that that helps and it may not yeah it doesn't seem to really be helping um so i guess we won't worry about that for now <laughs> like there's a there's a whole there's a whole other workshop and I like I say I just wanted to keep this short, but um, you can see how you can quickly create robot designs and it's creating pretty cool robots every time. There's another one I just left Cyborg in there now. 
Um, so, you know, if you're a robotic enthusiast, which I am, and I build robots as well, this is a great way to create designs. So I can, I can sculpt this in ZBrush and like, uh, print it out using my 3d printers. I can add all the mechanical parts of it and servos and, uh, you know, add the source code, um, to, to run it all using Arduino or, uh, Palulu, um, robotic controller. Um, so I can create, I can, I can create this in real life. Um, it, it's good to have a few skills, but it's quite, it's quite fun. See, I just keep on clicking generate, create a new robot each time. It looks really cool. Um, it's a really good, it's a really good, um, new little checkpoint. I'm, I'm really happy that, uh, that AI, AI entrepreneur decided that he was going to post this today. Yeah, so there you go. So, uh, I mean, I did actually, what I did try to do is, if you remember yesterday, we had th already created a robot in Photoshop. I don't know, it's, it's not really letting me open up now. Maybe it's going to crash on me. Let's check here. Oh, I'm not frozen, but it's not opening that folder. Um, I'll just try and refresh it. It's, it's It looks like my web browser is completely frozen. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you get that. You, you get that when you're running Stable Diffusion on a local machine. So let's get out of Stable Diffusion now. So there's a, a, a new checkpoint, the Robo Diffusion checkpoint. Um, go check it out. Go download it from the links. If you've already got uh, Automatic 1111 installed, then you've got a, you know, a quick, um, a quick merger that you can do and be able to create these AI generated robots just straight away and have some science fiction fun and give us a year or two and all the science fiction stuff will be science fact. I can tell you that for a fact because I'm literally working on the mechanical technology as well, just as a hobby. And I'm not the only one. I'm not the only amateur robotists out there. And I can tell you that we are definitely producing things that look better and operate at a, at a higher level at this stage than uh, even what Tesla's doing with their Tesla robot. Not me personally, but I can tell you a couple of roboticists already that are doing way more advanced stuff when it just comes to like uh, things that are more humanoid looking. Um, and obviously we've got Boston Robotics, which, you know, hands down are doing some of the best robotic stuff that I've ever seen. So yeah, there you go. There's a uh, quick little lab on Robo Diffusion. Go check out Robo Diffusion. Go generate some robots. Post your results in the comments on these videos. I like, you know, I don't quite know. Show, I'm not quite sure how you post image images into the comments, but you know, I don't spend a lot of time on YouTube these days. Have a go. Let me know what you think about it. I think it's pretty cool. I don't make money off these videos, but in order for me, for people to see my videos, I have to have subscribers. I have to have likes. So if, if you uh, want to help just get the message out, get this information out to more people, then liking and, and subscribing doesn't help me because I don't care, but it helps for other people to find this information. Otherwise I'm just, I'm just sending this information out by literally posting onto the stable diffusion groups that I'm part of. And I'm really a part of one stable diffusion group. So yeah. That would really help other people find this video. That's it for now. I've got to get back to editing. I've got clients that are waiting for things. So I hope I hope that helps for my fellow robot enthusiasts and you know, have some fun. It's pretty cool. I thought it's pretty cool. There's some pretty cool results just for text to image. Okay. Laters.